I really hope my presumptions surrounding all of this are wrong, but given this is Activision we're talking about, and given their track record of just taking studios who made a lot of great games and relegating them to be support teams, or just straight up shutting them down and ruining them, I'm not particularly confident about the direction that Toys for Bob is headed in. For those who don't know, that's the development studio behind Crash Bandicoot 4 and Spyro remake. Toys for Bob has kind of, over the years, proven themselves to be one of the more beloved studios within Activision. One of the developers that people kind of look forward to seeing what they're working on next. Except, uh, based on recent reportings and announcements, it would seem as though Toys for Bob is now mainly focused on helping out with Call of Duty and no doubt Activision had a role to play in that. So this information was first relayed by Toys for Bob on April 29th, 2021, when they tweeted this, Toys for Bob is proud to support development for Season 3 of Call of Duty Warzone and look forward to more to come. Call of Duty is basically Activision's flagship IP, and given the amount of revenue it's raking in, it's perhaps not at all surprising that the executives are trying to focus as much as possible on developing Call of Duty titles and enhancing, you know, games, life services like Warzone. And now Toys for Bob is going to be a part of that. But on top of all of this, the reports of developers either leaving or l being laid off on top of Toys for Bob's reassignment into Call of Duty. A number of developers who used to work at Toys for Bob have kind of spoken out. And this was reported by New Salad Eurogamer in a in an article whose headline reads, Activision puts Crash Bandicoot 4 Dev Toys for Bob on Call of Duty Warzone development duty. It's the end of an era. This is a quote from one of the devs. Among the people who spoke out was character designer and illustrator Nicholas Cole. If we go to this developer's Twitter page, you'll find that Nicholas retweeted Toys for Bob's tweet and basically waved them goodbye and then tweeted, it's the end of an era, but I wish my former co-workers still with uh, Toys for Bob all the best with what's ahead. And then when another user responded with, I'm honestly just happy that the team is still getting work at all. Life's kind of rough right now, and I'd rather they have something to work on something rather than being let go because of some ridiculous reason. Nicholas then responded with, same, although everyone I interfaced with and worked along was let go. I'm very glad it's not a totally shuddering. And what's especially disconcerting is the way he says it's the end of an era. I don't know if I'm just looking too much into it, but part of it feels like he's just straight up saying end of an era for Toys for Bob as a studio. And, you know, the fact that they're no longer kind of going to be what they used to be working on games like Crash and Spyro, but just end up being a support studio for Call of Duty. That's the feeling I get from this. Maybe I'm wrong, but that's just the vibe that this gives off, saying something like, it's the end of an era. I mean, hell, when somebody asked, wait, what? Toys for Bob is only doing Call of Duty now. Nicholas simply responded with, yup. And when that same person said, god damn it, Nicholas responded, I'm crushed. Not gonna lie. The kind of reaction that you get when, you know, it isn't just about the fact that somebody is no longer working at a studio, but the studio itself is headed in a less than ideal direction. It just sounds like Crash and Spyro may not be back, or at least not for a while, and hard to say if this is a temporary thing or if this is a permanent thing. Now, there's somebody else another developer who spoke up, going by the name Blake, and they tweeted out, I no longer work at Toys for Bob. I want to clarify that no one was laid off at Toys for Bob. Anyone who has left has done so on good terms, which obviously contradicts what Nicholas said here about his cohorts being let go. And I guess he didn't flat out say if he was let go, if he left of his own volition, but then somebody else pointed out to Blake that Nicholas tweeted about some people being let go, and Blake provided additional context that reads, Ah, well, Nick is part of the external concept art team, so I assume they had contracts that expired and were not renewed. So while Activision didn't technically fire or let anyone go, 
they did not renew certain contracts from folks who did work on Spyro and Crash Bandicoot 4. And that likely marks Activision transitioning the priorities for Toys for Bob into Call of Duty development. And the fear right now is that Toys for Bob will never return to making their own games, to pursuing their own creative endeavors, that they're being shifted to be a support team for Call of Duty rather than being their own independent studio with creative autonomy who are able to pursue projects that they would want to pursue instead of projects that publishers and executives are mandating them to work on. And even Blake, who insisted that nobody's been technically let go, did express concerns about the direction of the studio. So when somebody responded with, it's a shame to see them go this direction, I'm hoping it's only temporary, Blake responded with, me too. As if to say, I hope Toys for Bob doesn't just become a Call of Duty Warzone support developer, that this is just something that will happen for Season 3, and then they can go back to being their former selves. Within Activision, Toys for Bob is certainly one of the brighter spots under the Activision umbrella, and it'd be a shame to see them be relegated to just being a support studio when, as developers with creative autonomy, they clearly have a lot to offer. And this is in general just a disconcerting trend. Kotaku, for example, here reported that now every single Activision studio is working on Call of Duty on some level, and so it is further detailed down here how all nine studios directly owned by Activision are part of the Call of Duty machine in some capacity. Toys for Bob is working on Warzone Season 3 content. Ravensoft has been a support studio for COD since 2010. Ah, oh, Ravensoft, you know, they used to make such great games until they became relegated to being a support studio, and Toys for Bob could potentially suffer that same fate, which would be a shame. I'd love to see Toys for Bob continue making their own creatively autonomous products, and, you know, I'd love to see Raven go back to being who they used to be, etc. You can read all of this yourself. You know, Infinity War, Treyarch, and Slashhammer, of course, obviously heavily involved in Call of Duty. And Kotaku also makes it a point to highlight that Ravensoft, once upon a time, used to work on their own games and made some pretty interesting games, from Heretic to Hexen, Star Wars Jedi Knight, Jedi Academy, Marvel Ultimate Alliance, but haven't been able to pursue such projects because they've lost their creative autonomy under Activision's mandate that they're now a support studio for the Call of Duty franchise. A worse fate for a studio that's being made to be a support team is if it were absorbed into another studio within the publisher. And this article aptly highlights how studios like Neversoft, Grey Matter Interactive, Bizarre Creation, Shabba Games, and many more suffered such a fate and are no longer with us in the way that they once used to be. And now Toys for Bob seems to be headed in that direction. They do still have their name, but how long until they lose that? And even if they don't lose their name, are they going to be the same studio if they're just relegated to being a support studio? Like, Ravensoft is still Raven, but they're not the Raven we used to know and love. They are a shell of their former selves, because that's what Activision often tends to do. You know, they have their priorities for what is the most profitable venture, Call of Duty, and now everything seems to be focused on lifting that franchise up among some of their more popular stuff. Crash Bandicoot and Spyro are beloved games, but they don't rake in the kind of money that Call of Duty does. But that doesn't mean those kinds of projects aren't important. Doesn't mean that it isn't important to mix up your library, but Activision seems to be more and more focused on centralizing their efforts on the stuff that's most monetizable, putting all of their eggs into those baskets. Now, one aspect to all this that Activision PR did respond to is claims that people are being laid off at Toys for Bob. And on that front, they said reports of layoffs at Toys for Bob are incorrect. There has not been a reduction in personnel recently at the studio. The development team is operating fully and has a number of full-time job openings at this time. The studio is excited to continue supporting Crash Bandicoot 4, It's About Time, and more recently provide additional development support to Call of Duty Warzone. Note that Activision doesn't say anything about pursuing new ventures beyond Crash Bandicoot 4. All they said was continue supporting Crash Bandicoot 4, It's About Time, and then providing additional development support for Call of Duty Warzone. No hints about what's beyond that, which leaves me concerned that 
they're going to be relegated from here on out to just be a Call of Duty Warzone support team or a support team for any Call of Duty endeavor, which again, I really hope this presumption is completely wrong. But Activision has that track record that doesn't give me that kind of confidence. And as far as layoffs go, maybe technically they haven't laid anyone off, but clearly enough people were unhappy that some of them did voluntarily decide that Toys for Bob is no longer for them if this is the direction that the studio is gonna be mandated to be. And for those who felt like they were let go, I mean, technically, I guess it's just that their contracts weren't renewed, but it is, as far as I'm concerned, a way in which a company says goodbye to staff members who they feel are no longer of use. And the fact that some of these staff are being let go, contracts aren't being renewed, or staff are voluntarily leaving just leaves me all the more concerned that Toys for Bob is headed in a direction that is akin to Raven or Never Soft and all of those other Activision studios that have seen some kind of downfall. Games industry pundits are also wondering about the future direction of Toys for Bob. So Liam Robertson here, for example, at one point tweeted that not only has Toys for Bob confirmed via Instagram they're now working on Call of Duty, but also wonder what's gonna happen to extra content that was supposed to come to Crash Bandicoot. He said, I made a video for Patreon last month about one of the projects Toys for Bob was working on. It remains to be seen if it'll be released, referring to a PvP multiplayer game that is tied to the Crash Bandicoot franchise. Frankly, I wouldn't be surprised if it turned out to be that Activision shuttered all of Toys for Bob's future plans and just made them work on Warzone, and that was the end of it. Again, though, this is my own presumptions, and I'm hoping that this doesn't turn out to be the case, but I'm not particularly enthusiastic about Activision executives' ability to do the right thing and respect uh, creativity. But obviously only time will tell how Toys for Bob's fate will turn out. Until we find out more, let me know in the comments below. If you're as worried as I am, do you think that Toys for Bob will be relegated to just being a support studio? Or do you think there's a chance that, you know, they're going to be on Call of Duty temporarily and then go back to being their older selves and working on projects that they actually do want to work on that they're going to be granted creative autonomy over and that players can enjoy even if they're more niche compared to something like Call of Duty. Share what your future prospects for Toys for Bob are in the comments below and to be further updated on all things gaming news, reviews and discussions, stay tuned right here on Young Yeah. I'll see you guys next time. Young out.